The 2015 Black Tie and Blue Jeans Awards Gala, presented by the Ascoda Asable Chamber of Commerce, is brought to you by Huron Community Bank, Kalita Air, Bonnie Smith Financial Advisor, Ascoda Area Schools, Petrowski's Irish Pub, What a Girl Wants Boutique, CoinsandPins.com, Northland Area Federal Credit Union, Make Way Move All, and the Shoreline Players. party started. Thank you very much everyone for coming to the second annual black tie and blue jeans event. I'm glad to see all the different ways that people dress for this. It's fantastic. It's always a lot of fun. This year we took it a little far with the hat, but you know. Um, I would like to thank the uh, appetizer sponsors and that is Bill Tate from Tate's Bill Affair. Wave Bill. And uh, Will C's Brew Pub and Restaurant down here. Up. Up at the top, we have uh, from the Camp Inn Lodge. And also those nice sweet treats up in the corner are from Rogers Family Foods and Ace Hardware. We have some great bartenders helping us out. They jumped in last minute for me. Uh, Sandy and Joe Rays are our bartenders for the evening. We appreciate all of you coming down. This evening, we have a wonderful speaker. He is a native uh, from this area. He graduated from Osco to high school, and uh, a, a little while ago. Um, he lived in Greenbush, and uh, his family has been a big part of my world at the chamber. So I would like to introduce you to Mike Taubitz. Hello? Yep. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Folks, honor a pleasure to be here. Uh, as a 1965 grad of Osco to high school, I can just tell you that I've had a great life since then, but a lot of it was the foundation that I got here. And so I hope that my words will have some meaning for you. I learned one thing in 43 years through General Motors, if you can't be good, be brief. So it's not going to be too long. And if you would, next slide. The significant problems we face cannot be solved with the same thinking that created them. And I'll come back to that. Next slide. I want to share with you, had the privilege this last Tuesday of being at my local Fenton Chamber where I try to help out, Fenton Regional Chamber of Commerce, and here's some highlights that I thought might be relevant for here. They had the heads of chamber for Fenton and Linden and Holly and surrounding communities. And there was a pretty common theme that was going through. Anybody have any idea what that might have been? They're all doing pretty well. Now here's what's amazing. In late 1980s, Flint, Michigan alone had 88,000 General Motors employees. They have about 10,000 now. And those communities around where I live were just as devastated as a lot of communities up north and everyone else finding that the retirees, the people who once had really good paying jobs and others weren't there any longer. But these communities have seen a revival in the last few years. And what do you think drove that improvement? Any idea? It was collaboration, it was teamwork, and it was leaders. And what they found is when the township began to work with the cities and work with the schools and the businesses and everything else, the market grew. And so what I'm hoping to do is kind of build on that theme tonight for make it happen, because you really can. And the last thing that I'm going to lead to is um, the main speaker they had Tuesday morning was Rich Studley, who's um, head of the Michigan Chamber. Anybody here had a chance to ever hear him? He's a great speaker. E excellent job. What do you think? is the number one legislative priority for the Michigan Chamber of Commerce. It's all right, little interaction. All right, next slide. Plays in perfectly for what I want to talk about, education and workforce readiness. When I left Greenbush, Michigan, I had this great education at Oscoda High School. I was able to move down to a larger system. Yes, I went to General Motors Institute and I got an engineering education. It didn't cost me a nickel. I almost left going to skilled trades because they made even more money. Those systems, folks, are gone. 
But the crying need today is how do we prepare our young people for the needs of our local communities and other things in the future. And that is the theme of what I want to talk about tonight. Next slide. And to do this, I'd like us to kind of rethink teamwork and preparing our youth for tomorrow. And trust me, this is not going to be complicated. The thing that drives me nuts that I've watched through my career is I'm convinced that we in the U.S. like to add complexity. The consulting groups, the IT people, we're going, wow, you're going to love this, except guess what? It tends to fall down. I'm still real active throughout the nation doing expert safety consulting because systems fail and people get hurt and people get killed and a lot of times it's because we've made things too complex. I want to rethink it and make it simple. Next. I call this the game of life. Just think about this. You can read all those things, the kids, the parents, the coupons, the church, news. It's what everybody faces. It's a scramble and everybody lives with chaos. Next slide. Is it really much different? It's like whack-a-mole. Anybody here not played whack-a-mole? Yeah, right. Whack, whack. Don't you feel like that sometimes? You're running to the latest email in crisis and oh, poop moment that I got to go do something. It is part of our life. Next slide. And so what happens, my observation, that is it's only gotten worse from the late 90s into the 2000s, I see it with my clients today, there's just palpable stress in the workplace. And it's that problem then that it always leads to communication and I didn't hear about this and what do we do? And it always kind of still falls to like, well, he or she didn't do it. Folks, you need a better system for communication. It doesn't just happen because you happen to talk to somebody or send an email. Next slide. So part of what I want to lead into with that, with the whole theme of workforce readiness and preparing our youth, is this concept of coaching and mentoring. I know this will shock some, and please, Mary, don't fall out of your chair. I was not a model student. <laughs> if, I had, if I had grown up in this era of here's the standard and there's zero tolerance, my life would have been very, very different. I got out of line quite a few times. I'm not proud of it, but I had people who bumped me back in line at Oscoda throughout my early career in General Motors. And it was all about trust and respect. And it's like, you know, kid, you don't have to know how to do these things. You show up on time, you be a hard worker, follower. People taught me the system and they gave me a good life. But it always involves the person in the team. Every time I hit the holiday season and you go out and you see somebody struggling with making a, a sales transaction at, at one of the stores, and I usually go, ah, new computer system? Oh, yeah, and they're struck. Nobody showed them how to do it. I tend to see in a lot of places there's so much stress, we throw people at the jobs, and the only way you learn when you did something wrong is when you did something wrong. So I want to get at the root cause issues of things. I want to talk about commitment of leadership to try and make things better. And you do that. It's like the Socratic method, but you ask probing, searching questions. Go show somebody how to do something. Do you understand that? Watch the person do the job. Step back. Help them. Coach and mentor. Every one of us, all you have to think about is we all had a hobby, a skill, or a sport, and we were all terrible the first time out. But we got better because of our coaches and our mentors. And that is the theme for this. Next slide. Never underestimate the power of whiteboard. First thing I do when I go in with a client and they have a complex problem, everybody goes, what are we going to do? I don't know. Because I don't know what the problem is. So I get people around a whiteboard. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on. Doesn't matter whether it's a technical issue or it's a political or some other issue, you got to know what the problem is. Next slide. This is interesting. Busy slide doesn't matter what it is. I was on the phone yesterday with a good friend of mine, who's safety director for a large electrical consulting firm around the D.C. area. I want you to picture a company with 4,000 electricians spread out in hundreds of teams through all several states. How do you keep control of what's going on? High hazard work. 
Well, they got all these management systems and all this complex stuff, and we finally got down to how do we implement this? We've got all these people spread all over. One of the hourly workers said, give us a whiteboard. And that's exactly what their system is. Every morning, each individual team gathers at a clean whiteboard. And around a model that they've been trained in, they begin to think about this ORM as just operational risk management. Is everybody here? Do we have the tools? Do we know how to do the job? What's the high hazard thing we prepare for? They clean the board at the end of the day and they start new. That's respect for people. That's trust with people. It's giving them a simple system to plan their work and to do their work. Next slide. So now we're going to go through an exercise. And I've already talked with our very capable guys up in audiovisual, but I want you to bear with me because this is going to be fast. And this is a concept of using some simple thinking. Lean was a term that was coined to describe the Toyota production system. And it came about in a book in 1990. But all Toyota and the Japanese had done after World War II was to follow the simple teachings of a guy by the name of Dr. Deming and Duran and others. And they didn't teach lean. They taught respect for people. And having simple systems in place so that people could do their jobs flawlessly. And it was always the leader's job to put that system in place. So here's an example of what happens if we use this 5S thinking. So let's picture that in your organization, you have a business process that needs these balls. You got five of them, and you need them all there. And you want to have them there so that nobody goes, oh, shucks, where is this one? And what do, what do I do now? It's what we go through all day long when we ran out of toner or cartridge or doesn't matter. So what we're going to do, and you're only going to have two seconds with this next slide. So how many green balls do you see? Next slide. 1,001, 1,002. Switch. There we go. So the first step in this process, sort. We're going to get rid of the things we don't need. And we decided that we didn't need these little soccer ball things that we see. So we're going to get rid of things we don't need. Two seconds. Next slide. 1,001, 1,002. Any idea how many green balls we have? All right. We're getting there. Shine. Shine is the next step, says, look, once I've gotten rid of the stuff I don't need, I'm going to begin to clean up so that I can see what I do have, and it'll be pretty easy. So let's see how many we have now. Next slide. 1,001, 1,002. Next slide. All right. Any idea? The next slide, I'm going to guess that every one of you will get it immediately. And this is the concept of having a system so that everyone can perform flawlessly. Next slide, 1,001, 1,002. Next slide. Ah, bingo. See how easy? Now, what happens is that never maintains itself. Never does, because chaos sets in. So what you do with a five-step system is I've got to standardize. Next slide. And that might say to somebody, I have to inspect this daily. I've got to make sure all the balls are there. I need to do this. I, I'm not just being a neat and clean freak. I'm trying to do this so that other people don't go through the stress of not having what they need. Next one. And part of that makes it sustain so that when somebody goes, oh, I'm missing one, now I'll get it back in place so my colleagues will have it. Next slide. My wife hates this, but I have to show it. This is her junk drawer at home. How many people have a junk drawer somewhere within 10 feet of your kitchen silverware drawer? Is there anybody who doesn't? Yeah, right. When you use this thinking, you don't have to get lost in it. That's maintained itself after 23 years. It's not my drawer. I didn't set it up, but there's one key here. She got rid of the 42 pens she originally had and everything else, and then she compartmentalized them. So think about all the things that you have and think about how with very little effort your silverware drawer maintains itself. That's the kind of simple thinking that you can take into the workplace. It's the kind of thinking that you can use as a foundation for continuous improvement anywhere, including across an entire community. Next slide. So part of the message, good communication with a good system enables better teamwork. 
And that's what we want to do. We want to improve the working environment so that you have more people who want to come to the Oscoda area and have a good time. Tourism is still a big deal. That means that you've got to have workers who are making people whom you'll never see feel welcome. You've got to have consistent communication. You can't be guessing at the number of green balls. And you want to get rid of stress and errors. And you want to keep communication lines open so that when a worker says, boss, something isn't working right, it's not the worker's fault. It becomes leader's responsibility. Let's work together. Let's try and solve this. Next slide. So lean communication is about less is more. Visuals are good. It finally sunk in on me after 30 some years why the Japanese had hand-drawn stick figures for assembling a car. We had all this fancy computer graphics. It was crazy. When the workers found a problem, they changed the, the little hand-drawn graphic. Brilliant. Respect for people and the environment. You gotta have a desire to wanna communicate for better teamwork. And again, this is a foundation for continuous improvement. Next. This is an example of what happens. I have a good friend who retired from General Motors early to take over the homeless shelter in downtown Flint, Michigan. Carriagetown Ministries, Dallas was also on the uh, school board for Swartz Creek Schools. And what you're looking at, doesn't matter what the words are, yeah, that's a one page three-year strategic plan. Did they have more information behind it? Of course they did. But if you want to communicate to everybody in the community, what are you doing? They're going to read 20 pages? They don't. So that's lean thinking. It's simple thinking. It's getting it down in a succinct, concise manner that can help be the cornerstone for an entire community coming together around strategic plans. The power of one-pagers works anywhere. Next. So we get back to this pretty smart guy who coined the phrase, significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking. And so that's my message. I want to talk about simplifying things for improved performance. Next slide. And what I'd like you to do now, and this is very informal, I'd like you to just turn to somebody next to you and begin to just talk about for a couple, three minutes, if this triggers any ideas about what you might do for improving communication and teamwork in the community, here at the chamber, through the schools, what do you do to make this a better place? So have at it for the next couple, three minutes. Another 30 seconds. Okay, if I can ask for your attention for just another minute or so, is there anyone who would just like to share a thought or an idea? There's no bad ideas, but appreciate just hearing if anybody has something. Okay, over here.
I, I just have to break in for commercial. I love that because that's happening right now in the city of Flint. And there is an informal coalition that bridges everything from Kettering University down to Carriagetown Ministries in some of the most blighted area you can imagine. And these people meet over Einstein bagels. And everything is informal. And people are getting together and getting grants and rebuilding homes. They're putting the homeless to work. It doesn't matter what the issue is, folks. It is about teamwork and collaboration. It won't happen unless there's trust and respect. So I, I just, it works anywhere and everywhere, whether you're in private enterprise, but public-private kind of collaborative efforts like that is what really gives communities an extra edge. Anyone have anything else they'd like to share? Okay, well, next slide. So I'm going to finish with, with this thought. Here's my simple little lean communication. I have a little sheet of paper that I carry in my wallet. And I'm not going to read the words to you because they don't matter to you. They matter to me. They begin when viewed from the perspective of the worker. And this means something for me as I carry out my work and for my clients. And so what, I don't care what the words are, but I'm going to encourage everyone to think about writing the words that mean something to you, of something you'd like to make happen in 2015, and put it in your wallet so that when you see each other at a chamber meeting or other event, you can go up and, what's in your wallet? <laughs> Folks, thanks very much. That concludes the presentation. Thank you for having me. The 2015 Black Tie and Blue Jeans Awards Gala, presented by the Oscoda Asable Chamber of Commerce, is brought to you by Huron Community Bank, Kalita Air, Bonnie Smith Financial Advisor, Oscoda Area Schools, Petrowski's Irish Pub, What a Girl Wants Boutique, CoinsandPins.com, Northland Area Federal Credit Union, Make Way Move All, and the Shoreline Players. A uh, quick introduction here. We have some wonderful stagehands this evening, and they will be uh, escorting the people. Most people don't know if they're winning. Most people. Um, so when your name is announced, if your name is announced, um, please come up this way, and these wonderful ladies will be helping you uh, get up to the stage. We have, we might need the lights again, Eric. We have Samantha Orchard, who is Miss Iosco, Miss Iosco Outstanding Team. <laughs> And then we also have Ashley Flowers, who is Miss Iasco County. We're very fortunate to have them here helping us again this evening. Thank you, ladies. It'll be just a couple seconds. Uh, real quick, I wanted to, if, for those of you that were here last year, our first year, um, you'll notice there are a few differences. And the differences are really nice. Their flower arrangements and their table coverings and their uh, tool that's run down the line. And that is due to our decorating sponsor, State Street Interiors, and What a Girl Wants. So they took care, and they made it look all really good. And for right now, we're going to have um, a message from our president, Regina Fortner. Okay, so on behalf of the Oscoda Oscoda Chamber of Commerce, we'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight and helping us celebrate the community and the special people that we have in it. This year, we started out with a nonprofit roundtable meetings. And at least they meet every quarter. And Diane Munden is a very, very instrumental person in making sure that this happened. She um, put together, with the help of the United Way, a nonprofit directory and has got it published, and everybody can see it, and it's out there for everyone. Okay, the next thing that's really good about what we've done this year is our e-blast is still growing. We're around 1,500 people, and this allows everybody to see what we have going on in our community, 
and it's a wonderful asset to let people all over, not just Oscoda or, or Michigan, but the other states, and they can see what we have going on around our community. Okay, then we have the honor of having the CEC held in East Tawas this year, and Oscoda was able to help bring people here to see what we have to offer in our part of the world. And it was absolutely awesome. There was lots of different people from our community that made that great. When you're looking through your program this evening, and as it's point, pointing up, matter of fact, right there, that's going to be the, our new cover for our community um, profile. And they should be coming out sometime around the end of this month. Business off the clock, that has been really, really great. Different businesses have taken the time to do that, and it shows off and showcases your different businesses and hopefully brings in more business for you. And for some of us that don't necessarily get to that business or whatever, we might learn something new. And we're hoping that this year we'll continue and have even more. The Chamber has um, continued and will continue to um, partner with the Exploration Trail, the U.S. Heritage Route, the Michigan Sunrise Coastal Coalition, and developed by OSCO. And there's many other organizations in our area that we have partnered with and we will continue to partner with and hopefully grow all of us. Finally, there's a little bit of sadness, but a lot of happiness. I wanted to take a minute and say, what a great job Lisa's done for the chamber, for our community, um, and most of you, I'm pretty sure, already know that she's accepted another position and the chamber's losing her. So I just want to say, you're going to be missed wherever you went to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Lisa, I'm sorry. I forgot. We have a little bit of change in the program. Kathy Morgan Jones asked to have a minute, and I forgot to know. I have a complete lack of trust with this Well, I. I, 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 I <laughs> you have to have your spot. You don't have any trust for me. I don't have any respect. I you know. So. <laughs> I promise I won't embarrass Lisa okay, much. Yeah. She's, she always said I was her favorite, and she told everybody she was their favorite. Because you all are yeah. my favorite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted to give Lisa a little something to remember us all by, and hopefully it will lead you on a really good journey because you have made our journey wonderful. Thank you very we much. love you, and we'll really miss you. And I think there's a, another young lady here. Yeah. Young as me. Sue Miller, I think, needs to tell you something, too. Oh, my God, you guys are not nice. I don't think you are. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, honey. Yeah. How you doing? The deal here was that I was not supposed to be embarrassed or called to pass. Yeah. Embarrassed? Yeah. Wow, she trusts me, too. I try to be <laughs> For those of you who don't know, my name is Sue Miller, and just like the beer, in case anybody wants to spell that. Um, and I am the president of Shoreline Players Theater, and we would like to take a minute to thank Lisa for all the support that we have received from her, as well as the chamber. Um, throughout her tenure with the chamber, she has been a cheerleader, she has been an organizer, she has been a great asset to, hear, to all of us here at the theater and to, um, keep our doors open and keep us going and keep us motivated and we just um, wanted to thank her so hold that just one second while I flip this open. So um, we'd like to, you know, I know you don't have enough of these. So a certificate of appreciation, this certificate is awarded to Lisa Sutton for her dedication and support of the Shoreline Players Community Theater this day 
January 17, 2015. And we thank you very much for all your help and love, and we wish you the best in your new industry. Since we're on a side note, um, <laughs> I have made it. Oh, terrible. I have made it a point since day one to make sure that the chamber is the focus. The chamber is an important organization and it, uh, it has value. And it's never been about me. And it was never meant to be about me. And this is why, because I turn into a blubbering idiot. So um, I thank you. I have been humbled and uh, in a way that I never thought I could be. I love these communities and um, we're only getting better from here. So, God, I can't believe you guys did this to me. So, thank you very much. Oh. Okay. Okay, now, <laughs> on to you, because you're the important parts of these communities. Uh, now, we're going to do the awards, and uh, I'm going, I, I am supposed to introduce, and I will be introducing uh, the presenters uh, of the awards. Unfortunately, Vicki Hopcroft um, could not make it tonight, last minute, so I will be, will be presenting the first award. So, Aaron, or Eric. The nominees for innovation are Camp in Lodge, Great Northern Books and Hobbies, Okay, those were our nominations for innovation. I am proud to announce uh, that Camp in Lodge is the winner. Where are they? <laughs> oh no, no, if I have to do this, so do you. Get up here. <laughs> Innovation. Oh, innovation is to bring originality to one's industry with freshness and or technology. The originality can, displayed by, can be displayed by ideal or item. Uh, the Camp and Lodge, uh, as you know, is new this year and they have done a wonderful job uh, creating new things and innovative things that uh, a lot of people have been talking about and we're very happy to award this to them, so come on up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, seriously. Thank you. I followed the rules. <laughs> Seriously, thank you. Um, we are having so much fun. And if you haven't been there yet, please come. Um, camping has always been one of my favorite things to do. And if it pleases the family, then you got the rest news, right? The single guy that's coming in the hotel, it doesn't matter. It just all falls into place. That's what we're all about. It's so much fun. <laughs> Okay, the presenter for community involvement is Tony Johnson. The nominees for community involvement are Oscoda Lions Club, Imza Aki, Oscoda American Legion Riders, Wiltsy's Family Restaurant, Rogers Family Foods and Ace Hardware. The 
envelope, please. And the winner is Rogers Family Food and Ace Harvey. And community involvement uh, means to be a community-minded and involved business. Community involvement is not always so much seen in the community as it is felt by the community. Uh, Rogers Family Foods and Ace Hardware, certainly uh, a new business to the area, but not uh, as they have been around Northeastern Michigan for a long time, uh, but certainly part of the, uh, the greater Oscoda community and family and uh, we're certainly glad to have them in the area. They've jumped right in with both feet and supported many things around the area, so thank you so much for your contri contributions. I also want to say thank you, and thank you for the community for uh, br bringing us open arms when we came into the community, so it was greeted very generously, and uh, I grew up in a small town, 30 miles from here, and we all went to high school, the whole family, mom and dad, all the way through up, found the, found the wife only 15 miles away from Tawa, so I was close, been here my whole life, so, and, uh, you know, and uh, my dad and mom taught us at a young age, you know, if you're going to be in a community, you need to be in a community, and uh, if you don't make a living on, um, you make a great living on what you get, you make a life what you give, so and that's what we're going we're gonna to keep doing, so thank you. And the award for longevity will be awarded by uh, Adam Hume. I know he was here. The nominees for longevity are Party and Food Center. YMCA Camp Nisikoni. Kathy's Hallmark. Gilbert's Drugs. Oscoda Irish Pub. You will notice momentarily that Adam looks a little different. Um, he's short, he's blonde, he's thin. It is Rhonda Cope, I announced the wrong name. And the winner is Ascoda Irish Pub. <laughs> Longevity. Longevity, she's able to withstand the test of time and hold a sincere, sincere relationship with the community and their patrons. Just a little bit about Kathy. The pub was opened in 1980. It's a favorite watering hole for mostly the Kalita bunch that I'm aware of <laughs> and many, many more. The pub has endured through the, the tough times and continues to happily serve Oscoda and many of out of town regular patrons. Congratulations. You know, everybody asks me how did the Irish pub get called Petrowski's Irish pub? My mom and stepdad used to own a beauty salon and in the late 70s, everybody got perms, men and women, but the men didn't want to come in and get a perm when the women are getting perms, so they would come in after hours, and 
after hours sort of turned into happy hour, so someone said to my stepdad, hell, why don't you just add an O to the saloon, or to the salon, and turn it into a saloon? So that's how Petrowski's Irish Pub got started. Thank you very much. The 2015 Black Tie and Blue Jeans Awards Gala, presented by the Oscoda Asable Chamber of Commerce, is brought to you by Huron Community Bank, Kalina Air, Bonnie Smith Financial Advisor, Oscoda Area Schools, Petrowski's Irish Pub, What a Girl Wants Boutique, CoinsandPins.com, Northland Area Federal Credit Union, Make Way Move All, and the Shoreline Players. The next, the next person presenting the award is Jeremy Spencer. That's okay, it happens. Look at Jeremy. They got it. They got it. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> the nominees for excellence are The Hilltop. Asable Hardware and Surplus Do It Best. Goodwill Industries. Kathy's Hallmark. Hello, everyone. Uh, excellence. Excellence. To be an all around outstanding business for excellence in every aspect with customers, employees, and the community. And the winner is. Asabo Hardware and Surplus. Come on up here, Benny. I'm a little bit of a do-it-yourselfer here and there, usually at the behest of the little lady. And I get down to Benny's Hardware all the time, and I tell you, the best help that I ever get is from Steve. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much. Uh, Fifteen years ago, we came into the community and started in a uh, across the bridge in a small little store, and we made a pledge and a promise to the community and to our customers, our very loyal customers, that we would bring the best possible service, product, and quality to the area, along with price. That's going to continue as long as we're in town, and you guys keep us here. Thank you. I'm going to Disney World. No, really, I'm going to Disney World. This time for real, it's Adam Hume. <laughs> Adam Hume is the presenter this time. <laughs> the nominees for hospitality are Robert J. Parks Library, Camp in Lodge. Wellman's Party and Bait. As a frequent visitor there myself, whether I need beer or bait, this, I'm honored to present this award to Wellman's. <laughs> the Hospitality Award is uh, to a business that consistently provides professional, friendly, helpful service above and beyond customers' expectations.
All right. I want to thank you, folks. This is uh, unexpected, and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Come and see us, because we love you. The next award presenter is Kathy Morgan Jones. Somebody's very happy. <laughs> the nominees for customer service are Top O Michigan Insurance, Tate's Bill of Fare, Chemical Bank. Sobel Hardware and Surplus do it best. Customer Service Award, I'm sort of in the customer service business, is walking into a small business or a big business and having someone smile and say hello, know your name, and this person just exemplifies that. Angie Helinski with Chemical Bank, you are our Customer Service Award winner. <laughs> AKA Bam Bam. Angie, come on. <laughs> Angie used to play pool for the Irish pub, but she doesn't play anymore, so that's where she got the name Bam Bam. Thank you very much. Um, quite an honor to have a whole community represented, and you get to represent that community, but you're, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. Um, I'm just really honored. Thank you all, and come see me at Chemical Bank. <laughs> I'll be there with a smile on. The next award presenter is Martin Gajewski. The nominees for community service are Lamrock Heating and Electric, the Downtown Beautification Committee, the American Legion Honor Guard, the Oscoda Lions Club, Sunrise Side Home Healthcare, Alpina Alcona Area Credit Union. Uh, this is uh, amazing. Everybody else had three or four nominations, and we got five or six. So, looking forward to presenting this award. Community service recognizes an individual group or business had a voluntary service in our community. The winner is Lamrock's Plumbing and Heating. <laughs> Jeff and Jackie, you here? They were nominated for their generous donation last winter when the uh, Osco County Humane Society and Animal Shelter was without a furnace and heat. <clears throat> Jeff and Jackie volunteered their services and donated a brand new heating system free of charge and labor. So I think that amplifies quite an accomplishment in our community. Thank you very much. Um, started out as a, a Facebook post that morning. Uh, Jackie and I were down doing a college visit for our son, and uh, I got bored with the presentation there, so I started Facebook. 
and I come across a, a post by Lisa that said that there's a, a fundraiser going on for a new furnace for the Humane Society, or repair, I guess it was, it was. And uh, I private messaged her and said, hey, I'll, I'll send my guy down there. We'll, uh, we'll take care of it for you. So next thing you know, Lisa puts out there, hey, this is great. And uh, I sent my guy down there. It turned out it needed a, a whole new furnace there. So we uh, decided to stay true to our word there. Took care of it. Um, got down there on Monday. This was on a Saturday. And uh, got in heat. Kept the puppies warm, the kitties warm, and all the people in there warm. So we uh, just felt it was the right thing to do there. So appreciate the award and uh, the recognition there. Thank you. for our last award of the evening. I'm always very pleased with this one um, because it's such hard work to keep it a secret. Uh, we have our Citizen of the Year Award and that is going to be presented by our president, Regina Fortner. We managed to keep it a secret. Okay, so are you gonna tell me who it is now? <laughs> she wanted a secret, so she didn't tell anybody. Okay. Unfortunately, you guys get to listen to me instead of a nice little slideshow. So we actually had three people that were nominated. Mary J. Smotis, Tony Johnson, and Arnie LaRich. Each one of these people are very, very active and giving of themselves to our community. They've all been here and they believe in us. But this one person grew up here. He decided that he was going to do everything in his power to make sure that this community was the top. He didn't care what he had to do. He was going to do it. He's never at home, and I need help in presenting this award. There's one person, let me see. Can I have our guest speaker help me? Yeah. yeah. On this award, it's a real big award. I can't do it by myself, and I've asked this gentleman to help me. He's got a couple of words to say to help me <laughs> announce who won this award. Well, by It is on, all right. We probably have a guess. I want to tell you the, the invitation to come and speak was completely independent of this thing that came along later. But it is a real honor to be here for my nephew, Tony Johnson. Before we hand over this auspicious award or tell Tony stories, <laughs> I think that everyone would agree that behind every good man there is a better woman. And in this case, there are three of them here who have put their foot in your panty on various occasions. And I think it's appropriate to have mom, sis, and your much better half friend all stand just for a quick moment of recognition. Matt, Teresa. Brand, because we know what a foot in the panty is for a motivator. Congratulations. What an honor. Pleasure to be here, buddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was losing weight. <laughs> uh, 
truly a surprise. Thank you so much. I uh, really don't know what to say. I didn't even realize I was nominated. That's how much the secret it was. Um, I, when I moved back here uh, from the military, uh, I knew that this was the place that I wanted my family to be raised. And um, that was a big, just a big motivating factor for me over the last 15 uh, or so, 20 years now, I guess, since I've been back. And uh, when I made those decisions, that affected so many decisions down the line, career and otherwise. Um, and, and then I turned to, if this is the place that I want to raise my family, then I need to turn it into a place where everyone else wants to raise family. So um, that's a big, big part of why I do what I do, and to be recognized for um, some of what I think are, are sometimes small things. Um, it's, it's really an honor, and I thank you very, very much. I would like to thank uh, Eric Joseph and J.D. Hawk for those amazing graphics and audio in the middle. Uh, over the course of time, we hope to give the Grammy Awards a run for their money. Uh, I really appreciate all of you coming. It has been wonderful, short of the moment that I turned into a blubber in. And uh, I hope that you'll continue to support the Chamber and that you'll continue to come to events like this because you are what make everything here possible. Um, business owners, residents that get involved, that, that know how important it is to do the little things because the little things are the big things in the end. Uh, we appreciate you and we appreciate you supporting us. So thank you very much. Um, please help yourself to any appetizers or beverage and enjoy your dinner at your restaurant of choice. Thank you. The 2015 Black Tie and Blue Jeans Awards Gala, presented by the Ascoda Asable Chamber of Commerce, is brought to you by Huron Community Bank, Kalina Air, Bonnie Smith Financial Advisor, Ascoda Area Schools, Petrowski's Irish Pub, What a Girl Wants Boutique, CoinsandPins.com, Northland Area Federal Credit Union, Make Way Move All, and the Shoreline Players. <laughs>